Hello and welcome back everybody. Sarleon here and welcome back to Chardock. Today we're going to be investigating a camp. We came by here briefly during our tour. It's not really called a camp, but it's Foreman, Murtok, and an Ixar trustee. Ixar trustee is a little bit easier to identify here versus the, un the Foreman due to the placeholder name mismatch. Underboss, Foreman, Foreman, Underboss. It's just not consistent, you see? So uh, I was confused. I just passed got by this guy a lot because I was trying to, because I figured out how to do the trustee. Then my friend pointed out, hey, this is a placeholder for a named. <clears throat> and so f long after I identified, oh, I could just treat this as a camp. Pacify the undead, take down the placeholders, voila. So let's get started. You'll notice there's just one placeholder, an enslaved Ixar miner. Fortunately, we got him pacified, so your pacify is good for about three minutes. And then we can work directly. There's no other social aggro on this foreman, not underboss, foreman. <laughs> there's no other social aggro on this foreman placeholder. So that makes this guy pretty easy to manage. And we're gonna be using a little bit more advanced technique you'll see me doing down in these regions. That is starting with root. Doesn't always land, but when it does, you're gonna get about anywhere from zero, well, let's just say it as it is. You're gonna get anywhere from zero to maybe three dots in. So to get a good start, that's huge. That's very beneficial to get those dots planted, especially splurt. It can usually run its full course. So you can either fight him just beyond this XR Miner. I like to pull him back across the waters a little bit. If you have the underboss, the placeholder, or foreman position right, sometimes it'll cause a flea. So that can be good or bad depending on <laughs> depending on where if if you get stare to land or not. But yeah, we just pull it back here. You've seen me do this a number of times. The placeholder is 55. I think the name is 56 or 57. You're not using any special techniques here. Just kind of business as usual, so to speak. One thing I wish I would have done, I wish I would have got deflux up. Um, this is not a perfect fight. You see right there, he got triggered to flee, which, well, it would have been fine, but yeah, I took my pet down. Oh, well, better him than me. Okay. Well, again, we're treating this as a camp. I would say this is vital to treat as a camp because if you, if you want to get the Ixar trustee pulled, You'll have to have the placeholder down to make it effective. However, notice this Ixar collaborator has no zone faction social aggro. So realistically, this isn't a bad spot to just set up and take down the collaborator. The collaborator is level 52 to level 55, so you can sometimes get some nice gems from it too. But here I'm going to be demonstrating aggro kiting. I don't think you all have seen me aggro kite much, but basically here it is. You turn off your, pen, your pet taunt, and then you just use a lot of high aggro spells. Your pet your pet will damage without taking any hits. So it works similarly to fear kiting. You keep the enemy snared, your pet beats on it while it's running. The only contrast is you have to constantly keep dumping aggro into it realistically I could have just used disease cloud or some lower level diseases or poisons but I mean this guy's not is not hard <laughs> at all so yeah let's just speed it up 
pet gets a little a after a while your pet will get some aggro but pretty easy to keep snare on it so yeah that's aggro kiting so if you ever get into an area that's wide open you have just one high level mob that you're trying to take um, people do this with ice burrowers in western waste you can somehow manage to aggro kite them again probably just using low level diseases disease cloud low level poisons and this collaborator should run soon yeah so there you go i mean we've got two techniques that you can kind of finagle with obviously i wouldn't recommend aggro kiting anything but the collaborator and we got a ruby for right effort so hey Better than nothing. Ta-da! All right, we got the Foreman pop. Foreman Murtok had spawned. So that's pretty cool. I like doing this name. It's just a nice, easy name that you can do with some good drop potential. Also, there's a note. He does drop a dagger that... Um, you can see holding so if you're looking for it plan accordingly all right now there's a good example I got I think I got a splurt off and that's about it now ideally you're gonna want a little bit of aggro dumped because there you go it's best if you 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 yourself are taking some hits because we've got our damage shield on now again, I have been giving my pet here a Deadwood Stave, and then if you want to use Kilva's or even the lower level potion to get some extra damage shield, that's highly recommended down here because these, these fights can come down to a razor edge until you've got a real knack for it. As you see, my pet's already a little bit lower than half health. Um, let's just speed this up possible we're gonna want to snare it all right we got it snared keep in mind when you're doing this method anything 55 plus will enrage or 56 plus I don't remember so you're gonna want your pet to have a decent pool or excuse me you yourself are gonna want to have a decent pool of health drop of like here I started with 50 um, this that I mean <laughs> that was a lucky channel but I could have got myself into some serious business. All right, and we got a Girdle of Flayed Ixar. That is, in my opinion, the best drop here. It's a belt item, eight, I think eight AC, six stamina, six wisdom, or eight stamina, eight wisdom, plus 30 mana. It's a pretty good belt. Belts are pretty tough to come by. We're gonna get started on the trusty now he did spawn I'm sorry I didn't show it but here you can kind of get into trouble I was sitting here pacifying for a while now you got four skeletons that you got to pacify and they're 55 now you see where this gets into oh shoot <laughs> feign fail and I've been down here for a while I do not have G boots um this is where a West Commons cap comes in handy. But yeah, at this point, there's not much. Not much I can do. I feign fail. Don't have Spirit of Wolf. That's just, just the way the cookie crumbles. All right. Well, let's. we're back to give that a fresh try. You just need to be really persistent here obviously have your charisma gear on the best you can I'd recommend pacifying the one closest to us at last just in case if you know just because that, that's the first one you pacify is going to be the first one that wears off and if we pull it by and it's But yeah, if it wears off while you're pulling the trusty, you got an ad, which you got to start all over again. So 
So yeah, this took me quite a bit to get it my first time. And in all actuality, I think I was messing around with it so long that somebody else came and another enchanter came and took the trustee. So that hurt. And I wanted to get it. I wanted to get it down after that. Yeah, be ready on that feigned death. I'm going to show you. I, I'm... This part I'm not going to cut since this attempt I got it. This is why you want to take down the placeholder. Give yourself a good 15 minutes to deal with. Because sometimes you're going to have to. It's it's like you have to keep the, <laughs> the best analogy. It's like a harmony. You got to play this chord for this long. You got to play that chord for that long. Um, and if they're not in sync... If, if the harmony is not in sync, then you got a bad song. Here, if you, if you pacify one skeleton and then it takes you a minute and a half to get the next one, a minute and a half to get the next one, well, you got maybe 30 seconds there and you got another one to deal with. So you need to be playing, you need some good luck. But I think I did find a way to manage this with less pacifies so I got that one pacified and then I was actually finding I didn't see that one furthest away the one that's just in the pathway I didn't see it aggro a couple times so this I, I'm yeah that one that I just pointed out See, it didn't pull aggro from the trustee. And I just, it was like a light bulb moment right now. It's like, oh, okay. Maybe I'll try not to pacify that one. Get those two closest trustee and then the one right here. And I was really playing around with, I was, I was dancing. <laughs> I was dancing to the death with time as we know it so you see him i'm gonna pull him he looks like he's just far away i'm gonna pull him with vexing more and since my health has just been dwindling down this wasn't the ideal engage but i just had to think i really had to think on a moment's notice Ideally, I would have liked to have pulled the XR trustee here, got him right here, rooted it, dotted it, and then moved back. But what, an I what, what what's an ideal situation in EverQuest? I'm not a huge adrenaline junkie, but sometimes it just gets my blood going when there's a split second decision that I have to make. And it's do or die. Either, either that bit, I'm going all in, I'm putting all my chips on the table, everything. And it's like, I got, I got ace two pocket. I see a uh, three come out on the flop. It's like, I'm all in. Is that four and five going to hit? I don't know. But <laughs> that's sometimes how I like to play EverQuest. It's what makes it fun. But what we got here, it's, I mean, this works too. I'm just having my pet go against the wall. I'm trying to get some aggro so I can pull the trusty back. It's not working. I'm going to heal up my pet a little bit. Now again, I highly recommend you give your pet deadwood staves while you're adjusting here. So that way it's got a little bit extra health region. I should have also had deflux. <laughs> memmed but I didn't because what's going to happen now it's trusty okay he's holding well get get in there right away <laughs> I lost the channel on spell because I got so worried I was like oh my gosh oh finally got it hearing a purity hey we'll take it I think I've died maybe once or twice because it'll kick your ass if you're not prepared. But just one for the road. I'm going to show you a better 
Foreman Murtaugh engage. I'm just back here. I root the foreman. You can root him back from this area. And if you're lucky, oh, okay. I pulled him. <laughs> came off. Uh, reminds me of that sand. Was it the sand lot where they were on the trombone? This is my tequila. Something like that. It's kind of what it felt like right there. Yeah, this is a bunch of the same. I just got a little bit better on gauge, so I wanted to show that off. That's that's what it's like. You want to feign death every once in a while. Pet's full health. Foreman's already down to 67%. My pet hasn't had to tank it at all. So that's, if you're looking at an ideal engage out of an ideal engage, this was probably as close as you're going to get without getting the full root duration, which... I mean, I got some good luck on EverQuest. I've never had that good of luck to get a full rip. And if you're really, really skilled, you can get a feign death off right there. And that'll help you avoid a faction hit. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. I'm still pretty high in the King's regards, the over King's regards. They still consider me kindly. Alrighty. One of my favorite camps down here. Love it. Thank you all for joining me. I'm so glad I finally got to share this. This is probably one of my favorite camps in all of Chardock as a necromancer. Just uh, so much tension, so many different skills you got to use. It's great. Well, thanks a lot. We're going to have a couple more and we'll be done here. So you all have a great night and take care. See you next time.